Hello, it's 58 Keys. I'm William Gallagher, writer and uh, journalist on Apple technology. We're in Keswick at the Pencil Museum and we're at the Pencil Museum to talk about keyboards. Well, we would, wouldn't we? 58 keys, there's got to be a reason for that number, 58. It's about keyboards, isn't it? We're here to talk about these things that I admit I am a bit obsessive about, and I'm not saying you should be as well, but look at it like this. You buy a Mac, you get a keyboard, you type on it. What else is there to say? Sit down, maybe have a cup of tea, because there's so much. What about uh, the Mac that doesn't come with a keyboard, apparently not even as an option, that's a weird one. What about the Macs that come with multiple different keyboards from Apple for you to choose from? How do you pick what's right for you? And if you don't find one you like there, what about the many, many, and let's go for it, three times many alternative keyboards from all sorts of other companies? There's got to be a reason why they survive, and we'll talk about them in a minute. But also, you've got an iPhone. You might have an iPad as well. You can write on that. You can write on the glass. You can, I do, we have. But I promise you this, get the right external keyboard for it, and it changes everything. Um, this is going to sound trite. I do actually think that keyboards are a lot like uh, pencils. I mean, I know you can write them, but also, uh, honestly, people get to collect them. We get our favourite keyboards. We get to we get a bit crazy about them, but we're allowed to. <clears throat> the exact thing with keyboards is I think you only realize the range of them when you have to buy one. So let's start with that first. The fact that there is this Mac where you have to buy a keyboard for it. It's called the Mac Mini, which is a, a B, BY, Bingo, what is it again? Now, the Mac Mini is BYODKM. What does that mean? All right? BYODKM. It means bring your own display, keyboard, and mouse, okay? We supply the computer, you supply the rest. That was back in 2005 when the Mac Mini was first launched. And when it was first launched, it had a very particular job, which was get Windows users to please use the Mac. Those days are long gone. I don't think Apple needs the money from Windows people anymore. So it can just make a very nice Mac Mini for us for writers, possibly for other people as well. Let's not rule anybody out. But the Mac Mini is for writers, and it's a very good, solid machine. But as a writer, you need to be able to type on it. I find that Apple still sells it as just this. They're hitting a price point, why wouldn't they? Okay, but every other Mac, every other Mac, when you go through Apple's website, offers you the option of choosing a keyboard to go with it, except this one. With the Mac Mini, the one where you have to buy a keyboard, it's like Apple makes you beg. Or at least go all the way back out and through the website and try to find where they keep the keyboards. The thing is, it seems to me, if you're going to be made to search for a keyboard, you might as well search a little wider and see if there's something else better for you, um, more appealing in any way, more useful in different ways, or that you just like the feel of a bit better. If you do go through Apple's, uh, website and go and no reason you really shouldn't uh, this is what you will end up with most likely this is uh, they call it the Apple magic keyboard the magic keyboard what are they mad or something but it is really very good in fact it, this is mine I use this every day and that's why it's a little bit dirty yeah don't look at that bit don't look at that bit uh, do look at how thin and tiny and slim this little thing is I mean, you call it little, it looks really small. It is officially a full-size keyboard and the keys are spread out the way they should be. It looks narrow. I, I think this part isn't great, the arrangement of the keys. Even after several years, I keep, whenever I need to go up and down, I have to look for it. Left and right, I've got used to, but up and down, yeah, not so much. Um, it looks smaller because it doesn't have a numeric keypad. Let me show you. There is a version, you could get this on the Apple Store right now. Well, not quite this version. This is my previous one. This is a really old one and uh, it's wired. Currently, you can choose wired or not wired, Bluetooth, wireless. Wireless is handier, but also there's this. You have this arrangement, the better set of keys around there for uh, cursor controls, numeric keypad for when you're doing your tax returns and all that stuff. 
yeah, that's what we've got into writing for. That's a true full-size keyboard, uh, and you can get one for your Mac. Um, you're just going to pay. Um, that first one you saw, the one that actually I've come to prefer, that's £100 on the Apple Store, about $100 around that type of thing. Uh, it does make me appreciate it when the keyboard is included. Like when you buy an iMac and you get one of these and it's included. I like that a lot. The longer one is, it varies, about £130, $150, somewhere around there. Now, I actually, I cannot knock that because they are really sturdy, really long lasting and very, very good keyboards. I love the feel of them and I hammer them to pieces. I, you know, They've lasted for years. I, I surely, 500, 600,000 words, without doubt, gone through these machines. So yes, expensive at the start, but they're worth it in the end. The trouble is, are they worth it enough to you when there are alternatives such as, uh, this is an awkward one to show you because this is difficult to get now. Um, I'm not actually gonna give you the price on this one uh, because it's now been discontinued in the UK and if it hasn't already in the US it will be soon but this is one I bought and I'll show you one actually no let me do that right now um, this is the nearest equivalent that's currently available it's the Logitech K380 it's still good to see a keyboard that isn't your usual white or grey or black I quite like blue I think there's a, another colour a greyish colour yeah, why not? My only problem with that keyboard is it took me a while to get used to the round keys. I'd show you this because I actually got one for myself and I used it a lot. I like it a lot. I appear to have loaned it to somebody. If that was you, you've got away with it. I've also actually bought it as presents uh, uh, for people I know who needed a keyboard for their iPad and iPhone. I got it for them for it. Let me show you with this one. Uh, you see that it's small. It's about the same size-ish as that Apple one, so I'm used to typing on both, but as well as being obviously portable and light, it has these buttons here. Easy to show you on the K380 again. Look at this, you see those yellow buttons? Let me come back to mine for a minute. Uh, these are Bluetooth pairing buttons, and you can set them up any way you like, but I have set this one to uh, pair with my iPad. I've set uh, this for my iPhone and that for my Mac. So I can, and I have, come back to my office with this keyboard, tap that button, written on my Mac as normal. What I particularly love though is I'll be in a library doing some research, using this, writing on my iPad, text message comes in, everybody goes, shh, sorry. Tap a button, I reply to that text, hit return, and it's sent, then tap a button, and I'm straight back onto my iPad. I like the, the speed of that duality of that, but also it's so much better typing on a keyboard than it is on the glass of an iPhone or an iPad. You can, we have, I do write a lot on the glass, tapping away on those screens, and it's fine. It's just so much faster with an actual keyboard that if you do go this route, if you do get an external keyboard, you're never going back. Small thing though, as well, I keep calling this portable, it is a desktop keyboard that can be carried about and has this great feature here, this portable stuff that's just, this is what I've carried around a lot. It's changed recently and I'll show you uh, something that's replaced it. But even now in events, if you work with me, you're quite likely to see this hanging around my iPad somewhere. There are portable -er ones. Let me show you this. Uh, this is a Zag uh, thing. There are so many different varieties of this, but this is a uh, like a folio, I think, if I can just get into it. Also, actually, let me just get rid of that. Okay, that is a teeny keyboard for writing away on your Mac and iPad and iPhone. Um, it's a little bit more cramped than the rest, and that's what you get with portable keyboards. Most of them, it's a compromise to get them into the size to be easy to carry or into the size to become a case that goes around the iPad, then uh, the keys are squeezed in a little bit. You will notice it will hurt your hands after a long time, but I've written, you know, 10,000 words on that on a train without too much complaining about the keyboard. Anyway, um, one small thing. Um, oh, you love. Fold that back later. Oh, I've got to show you this one. Let me show you this one. This was my absolute favorite portable keyboard 
This is the Microsoft Universal Foldable Keyboard, and man, it is a good keyboard. Uh, you see the split in the middle. Well, you get used to that remarkably quickly. And what's gorgeous is that the keys are, are quite deep, unexpectedly deep. So you're not just sort of like pounding on the glass feel. You're actually getting the detail, typing into it. It's a nice writing experience. I found the Bluetooth connection a bit wobbly. It would occasionally just forget that it existed. And it only connected to two devices, but that was my iPhone and my iPad. Love that one to pieces. It was just slightly too big to go into my jacket pocket, just by about a pixel. But still, I carried that absolutely everywhere until I got, but we'll come to that. Uh, one small thing, all of these keyboards you've seen so far, let's go back to this one. These are, I mean, there's a slight variation, but roughly speaking, they're all called chiclet keyboards. You're a writer. You, if you haven't heard that term before, you're thinking romantic genre fiction. And don't go knocking romantic genre fiction, uh, but it's not that. Chiclet, C-H-I-C-L-E-T. I think uh, it was some sort of American suite, maybe a long time ago, that looks enough like something like this, that somebody thought of it and it stuck. You call these chiclet keyboards in general. MacBooks uh, have a butterfly keyboard, which is something else altogether, and you don't have a choice with that. It comes with a machine. But you do have a choice with keyboards that you carry around. Because as well as chiclet, you can go another route and get, let's have a look at this one. Uh, again, this is very old. This is from oh, 10 years or more. Again, it's an Apple one. Again, it's filthy, sorry. Uh, but this is a mechanical keyboard. And you'll know this, you'll hear this. I love that sound. And I loved this keyboard. Uh, a lot of people still love mechanical keyboards. I have found though that the chiclet ones are just easier on my hands when I'm doing a lot of writing. For some reason, once I'd started using chiclet, these mechanical ones, they feel, uh, it's like it's retarding my typing speed. It takes more effort somehow. And I learned on a manual typewriter, so this is hardly a big deal, but it feels a big deal. I find this type of keyboard a little tiring. Many other people don't. Uh, sufficiently other people that one more to show you very similar and yeah sorry even older this is uh this is a wireless version of that same keyboard i can't remember when i swapped to this or how long i used but i also used it a lot because i broke bits that's what's underneath every key and actually some bits are missing here you can deliberately do that you can buy a mechanical keyboard where you can pull off all of those bits and swap them around and that sounds insane, but there are certain things. This is less for us as writers, but if you're doing other stuff as well as writing, you might find this useful. If you use uh, video editors like Final Cut Pro 10, for example, you could buy a keyboard where you take off the J, K and L letters that are used for moving around and replace them with J, K and L yellow keyboard uh, keystrokes instead. So it stands out and you can see it. You can see a reason for this. And a lot of people do it because it's practical, apparently. A lot of people do it because it's fun. And some people do it because they are even more obsessed with keyboards than I am. And I think right now, the ultimate obsessive keyboard is this. The ultimate hacking keyboard. Uh, recommend it being about 250 pounds. You get different bits uh, for it. I haven't bought one, so I don't know what costs what and which bit, but there are palm rests, there's ergonomic splits, there's all sorts of things that drive that price up. And people who have it, love it. Not, not tempted, not tempted, not tempted. Um, yeah, seriously not tempted. No, stop it. And let me give you uh, two pieces of really important advice that are close to warnings, actually, regardless of whatever type of keyboard you go for, mechanical, chiclet, portable, folio, wrapped around your iPad, separate, any of them. And they are these. Uh, buying secondhand is fine, you know, usual caveats, but you know what you're doing, secondhand, eBay, all of that. Just wherever you get your keyboard, get it for the region you're in. Now, different countries have different keyboards. And yes, you're thinking uh, France has Azerty, and most other places have QWERTY and things, but I don't even mean that. I don't mean either 
um, the layout of what's printed on the keys or what happens when you press any keys. I mean the physical shape of the keys. Look at this. This is a fairly standard UK keyboard. This is the American identical version. You see the difference? In America, always the return key or end key, whatever you want to call it, is wide. It's about two characters wide, but one character, character, one key, one typical key depth, two typical keys wide. In the UK, it's much more of a P shape and L shape. And actually, I, I, I mean, I'm used to that, so I prefer it. But it reminds me of the old typewriters, the you know, the actual carriage return. You used to have to press the metal bar for it. It looks just a little bit enough like that. And that's where carriage return comes from. So I kind of prefer that one. So watch out for that, just make sure. You, you will get used to it, but I found that very, very difficult, especially when I was swapping between all these different keys. I was forever getting the wrong thing. I was entering the character, whatever's below the return. So try to get them from the same region you're in. And the other one is, I know it's going to be very tempting as you look around prices to get a Windows keyboard, but don't do it. Yeah, there are many, yeah, there are a lot of Mac keyboards, there are so many more Windows one. And because there's so many more, the prices are a lot better. There are a lot of reasons to buy a Windows keyboard, but there's one against. And the one against is that instead of Apple's command key, there's a Microsoft Windows key. And big deal, except they move the keys around. The standard for Windows is in a different order to Mac. That's the killer for me. I'm happy to press any key, and you know, do whatever you do to make it be the Apple key, but I can't physically move my. That's why people get keyboards that you can pull apart and change around. Oh, I understand that now. Okay. Uh, don't put yourself through it. Get a Mac version of the keyboard you're after, whatever it is. And now, this is actually a little naughty. I'm going to show you a keyboard that I, even if you have never lusted after a keyboard before, you will lust after this one, which is. Yeah, good, but also dreadful because you can't buy it, not yet. But look at that. I walk out of my office with that in my pocket, my iPhone, I have a 10s Max, so quite a large iPhone. I put those both in my jeans pocket and that is my entire office with me wherever I go. Let me show you. Now that's a, so imagine that that, you know, you slot your iPhone in there and then you have this just put all these together and just, sorry because I'm trying to show I'm doing it in an awkward way let's pop that there and that that's a full size keyboard every key has a start startlingly deep travel on it and it has so many controls for moving the cursor so many controls for playing music, whatever, it controls your computer, controls your iPad in any way you like. The trouble is, it's, it's, you can get it. You can go to waytools.com, it's called a text blade, look for it and you can order it, but uh, don't yet. It's not on general release and it hasn't been for an extremely long time. It's been almost available for several years. I've had this now for nearly a year. The company gave it to me, I saw the facilities, yeah, it's a good company doing a great product, but it's not out on general release yet. And I'm not really clear why, and I keep crossing my fingers that it will, because the number of people I know who will get this as a Christmas present the moment it is. Unbelievable. Text Blade from Way Tools. I'm actually I'm just gonna take it away from you. I'm really sorry to dangle that in front of you and then take it away. But it's for your own good. Told you I was into all of this. Thanks for watching. Do subscribe. And if you ever, if you can get to the area, come to Keswick in the Lake District for the Pencil Museum. See you.